Welcome to the Weekly Option, the podcast for people interested in trading stock options. Each week, we cover trade ideas and opportunities in the stock market right now. Whether you're a beginner, a professional, or just curious about options, this is the show for you. Let's get started. Welcome to the Weekly Option. This is episode 73 on August 2nd, 2019. I'm your host, Eric, and in this week's show, we will cover the trades from last week on Chewy, Inc., Kroger, and Macy's, and we discuss three new trades on MBAC Financial Group, the U.S. Oil ETF, and Halliburton. Now, it's always great to hear from listeners. If you have any questions about the trades presented here or about your own positions, feel free to email me. You can reach me at eric at theweeklyoption.com. I've also created a short video series to teach you all the basics of option trading that you'll need to understand in order to be able to follow along with me on this show. You can visit our website and click on the videos tab to watch them or visit the YouTube channel for the weekly option. And I really want to send a shout out out to everyone who emailed me over this past week. Uh, I've created another video uh, to show you how to use the option trading uh, payoff graph tool that I created. So hopefully that'll be helpful for you. And if you have any questions, definitely reach back out. Uh, But you guys should have it soon if you don't already uh, have it in your inbox by now. Now this week, it was a reminder that we are one tweet away from, you know, volatile markets, uh, specifically lower markets this week. That's the season we're in. And to some extent, it might just be white noise. These tweets and whatnot might not matter. That's ultimately for you to decide. But um, we definitely are seeing some market reaction, especially when it concerns uh, the the uh, trade war with China. The Dow Jones Industrial Average fell 707 points this week, closing at 26,485 points. The S&P 500 Index finished the week 93 points lower closing at 2,932 points. And we have really one month left of summer. Um, This is our first uh, Friday. I'm recording this on Friday. This is our first Friday in August, uh, which also means that we're only two weeks away from expiration. But given um, so many of the factors that are in the news right now, the possible ramping up of the Chinese trade war and uh, information regarding that, you have us exiting a very important nuclear arms uh, treaty with Russia. You have missile activity uh, picking up in North Korea um, and the various political circus uh, for the presidential and other uh, you know, federal uh, uh, political races that are about to really kick in. I mean, I'm expecting the markets to keep moving around a bit to kind of maintain uh, a little bit of volatility. So it's important to stay nimble and liquid. You want to be nimble so that you can move and quickly adjust to any changes that happen. And you want to be liquid so that you have the capital to be able to take advantage of any trade opportunities that might pop up. And there are bound to be some inefficiencies allowing for good trades uh, given the way these markets are going to be moving. So um, the topic of the week is sponsored by the Option Studio. If you want to learn to trade options without any calculus and confusing language, visit the website to learn more about the online course. Visit www.theoptionstudio.com for more information. Now, the topic of the week this week is all about buying out-of-the-money options. Are these lotto tickets or simply a waste of your hard-earned capital? When you buy something out of the money, that means you're buying something that, or you're buying an option that has no intrinsic value and its complete value, its price in the market right now is a function of the time that's left in the option, like the time before expiration, and the likelihood that it will finish in the money. Now, if it expires out of the money, it's worthless, right? So why would anyone buy an out-of-the-money option? Well, there's always a possibility to lever up your, your trade uh, while still limiting while still limiting risk. So let's say you wanted to uh, you had the option of buying a thousand shares or buying 10 call options and you're thinking you're going to get a significant move in the in the underlying stock. Uh, in some situations it might actually be 
uh, more advantageous, uh, certainly on a return perspective, to buy the options rather, the st rather than the stock. So if you're expecting a stock uh, to make a significant move, you could look at purchasing an out of the money call option for say 25 cents. Let's say the at the money call option is, is trading for around 25 cents, or you could buy a couple out of the money options for 10 cents. Well, the beauty of, of trading out of the money options is that you don't actually have to hold the option until expiration to make money. If the stock moves in your direction, and you're able to sell those same options for say 20 cents, even though they're still out of the money, that's doubling your money. And that sort of situation happens um, a lot more often than I think people realize. Of course, if you don't get the move in the direction you wanted in the stock, you will only lose the amount of money that you paid for the options. So there, there, there's a limited risk aspect because you are buying the option. So I prefer to buy out of the, out of the money options if I've been watching a specific technical pattern uh, taking shape, and if everything lines up in a way that makes me think the big move is coming, and I use a few technical uh, analysis uh, features to try to um, kind of figure out when uh, the season or the right timing is correct as well or more likely. Um, if everything lines up, then I will allocate some portion of my capital to buying some out of the money options. And if it moves in my direction, I can sometimes double, I've tripled, and even more my capital, like the amount of money that I put on that strategy. The problem overall is that most people don't understand risk. And so they will buy these out-of-the-money options thinking that they're picking up something that has a deal, right? And the truth of it is the out-of-the-money options, especially the ones that are really uh, priced uh, very inexpensively, there's a high likelihood that the option will finish out of the money. So the people are likely to lose their money or they end up losing all of their capital because they just didn't size the trade correctly um, given that the stock move isn't definite. So many times we look at, uh, you know, we analyze the stock, we think we know what's about to come out as far as news and how the market re will react. And so we try to find the best way to make the most money possible and it's easy to forget that um, as perfect as your information might be, there's always the possibility that the market will react in the opposite direction or simply not as strong as what you're expecting. And so the stock move isn't definite. Like trading is not a game of definites. Um, it's a game of probability. Your options are priced. I always assume that any option I buy or sell is priced accurately for the probability that they will end in the money so if it's out of the money and cheap it's that way for a reason right so definitely handle buying out of the money buying any option uh handle it with caution and definitely if it's significantly out of the money and looks inexpensive it might be that way for a reason so um handle with caution now um we're going to get into the trade review of the trades from last week and this was certainly not a good week uh, for trade returns, for the trade suggestions. Um, that's why it's important, of course, to know your loss limits when you put the trade on. Um, you'll know that you can handle a loss, like I can handle the losses this week um, and keep moving uh, without it taking me out of the trading game. So never bet the whole, your whole hand, never trade your entire portfolio um, because, again, if we know it's a game of possibility and probability, then there's always a probability that I'm incorrect and I must sort of trade and allocate capital in a way that allows me to keep trading and, and make my make money on my next trade or have a possibility of it at least. So we're going to start off like we always do with the covered call. Last week we looked at Chewy Inc., symbol C-H-W-Y, Charles Harry William Yellow. Stock at the time was trading for $32.45. I looked at buying that stock and selling the August 35 call at 75 cents, which could yield a maximum return of 10% in three weeks. Well, Chewy shares grew 12 cents this week, closing at $32.57 per share. The call option we sold actually decreased in value by 5 cents, leading to a net profit of 17 cents on the week. Now, we actually need a, a really strong move in the stock uh, to lock in the original return we hoped for, and you can look at the stock and determine what you believe is the likelihood of that move. The good thing is that if you decide to close the trade right now by selling the stock and buying 
the call option back, at least uh, the idea made a little bit of money, um, even if it's not much. Always better than losing money. Second trade from last week was a credit spread on Kroger, symbol KR, Kevin Richards. Um, the stock last week was $21.48, and I looked at selling the August 21 half 22 call spread for nine, uh, at $0.19, cents, um, which can yield a maximum loss of $0.31 cents per spread. Well, shares of Kroger grew $0.76 cents this week, so the wrong direction, uh, closing at $22.24. So our out of the money call spread we sold is now in the money. We sold the spread for 19 cents and now the spread can be uh, repurchased. It can be bought back for 43 cents and that yields a loss of 24 cents. So I would typically look to buy the spread in and sell a put spread or something along those lines against it. But this stock is likely just having a brief retracement, uh, a retracement higher. And then I think it's going to head lower. That's my feeling on it. Um, it's definitely, certainly not a definite. I don't want to sell a put spread against this and then lose my money there too. I'm going to wait a couple days before making a move on this option in order to get a better sense of where the market uh, is going, like what the likelihood is that stock prices will head lower again um, in the next couple of weeks before expiration. Um, there's only another seven cents of possible loss in this spread. So in many senses, I've already taken the, like I'm facing my worst case scenario right now, given that it's lost so much. Um, I just want to make sure that my next move is profitable um, or at least uh, hedges some of the losses. So I'm going to give it a day or two of movement just to see in which direction I can sort of expect over the coming days. And that's going to define whether I buy this spread in and then turn around and sell a put spread or something against it or if I just leave this spread on and wait for the markets to drop lower again. And then my final trade for last week was a debit spread on Macy's, symbol M as in Mary. Uh, stock at the time was trading for $22.87 per share. I looked at buying the August 22, 22 half call spread, paying 32 cents per spread, and that can create a maximum gain of 18 cents, or that would be a 56.25% return in three weeks. Well, Macy's stock fell $1.58 per share, which is too much, closing at $21.29. The in-the-money call spread we purchased is now out of the money. We can sell the spread for $0.17, cents, which yields a loss of $0.15 cents on the value. Now, the stock right now is at a, at a, a support level that it bounced off of uh, back in July. And that, for me, is very optimistic. So I expect to see, um, like, if I expect the price to move higher in the next two weeks because of that. I like the fact that it stopped right at a place that had significant uh, value, significant support, specifically, uh, in the recent months. So um, much like this last trade, uh, or the last trade today, I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait a day or two and see if I can't... Um, gain a bit more value in the spread before deciding whether I'm going to sell the spread out and sell and sell another spread against it to recoup that 15 cents. So I don't want to continue losing money, but at the same time, I don't want to uh, create a second loss uh, by choosing a, a spread in the other direction um, that's going to end up being also in the money. So I'm just going to wait a day or two, let the market tell me what it wants to do, what it's going to do, and do my best to just listen. Um, I don't always like, uh, you can't tell the market what you want it to do, but you certainly can listen. And my goal, even with technical analysis, is to just be able to figure out what the market is doing and where it might go next. Um, trying to listen. So that's it for last week's trades. Let's dive into some new trades uh, this week. Um, and I was going to look at September because September is really the next month up, but there are two weeks left in these August trades, and I just decided to choose three more trades in August. So uh, just know that given the shorter time value, um, you're going to have less time to be able to make a, 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 a second trade uh, should, a, should any of these lose money. So, you know, when we're trading in the front month and there are three or four weeks left, it's great because we can, we can look at the trade, we can decide if, if it's likely to, to continue making money or whatever. Or if we need to close out the trade and put on another trade 
to try to um, recoup our losses. Um, when there's so um, little time left, you really have to be on your uh, on your best uh, behavior. Be be uh, basically just watching this watching this market closely because you don't want to lose any money. So the cover call we're looking at this week is on AMBAC Financial Group, symbol AMBC, Apple, Mary, Brian, Charlie. Stock finished the week at $18.36. And I'm looking at buying the stock and selling the August 20 call at $0.30. And that could yield a 10.57% return in two weeks. Now, you enter this trade by buying AMBC stock for $18.36 a share and then selling the August 20 call at $0.30. This trade makes the most money if stock prices finish above $20 per share. And the break-even price on this trade is $18.06. Our second trade for the week is a credit spread on the U.S. oil ETF. USO is the symbol Uncle Sam Oscar. Uh, the stock finished the week at $11.48. And I'm looking at selling the August 11 half 12 call spread at $0.17, cents, which could yield a, a maximum possible loss of $0.33 cents per spread. Now you enter this trade by selling the August 11 half call at 28 cents and then buying the August 12 call for 11 cents. This is a credit spread because we are selling the spread. This trade makes the most money if stock prices finish below $11.50 per share. The break even price is $11.67 in the stock. And then our final trade for the week is going to be a debit spread on Halliburton, symbol H A L, Harry Apple Larry. Stock ended the week at $21 per share, and I'm looking at buying the August 21 half 21 put spread, paying $0.31 cents for that spread, which could yield a maximum gain of $0.19 cents per spread, or 61.29% return in two weeks. Now you enter this trade by buying the August 21 half put for $1, and selling the August 21 put at $0.69. Cents. This is a debit spread because we are buying the spread, and this trade makes the most money if stock prices stay below $21 per share. The break-even price on this trade is $21.19. Now that's it for this week's show. Really appreciate uh, hearing from you guys. If any of you didn't get a chance to listen to last week's show, I made an offer and I'll continue to extend that this week. I have I use a option payoff graph tool, it's just a simple spreadsheet that shows me where I uh, make and lose money for my option trades. If you'd like to get a copy, just email me at eric, E-R-I-C, at theweeklyoption.com. So email me, let me know that you'd like to see the spreadsheet, and I'll send it to you via email. Happy trading. Have a great week. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to the Weekly Option Podcast. Please subscribe to our show and visit us at www.theweeklyoption.com. Disclaimer, there is a very high degree of risk involved in trading. The indicators and strategies described in this podcast are for educational purposes only and should not be construed as investment advice. For our full disclaimer, visit our website at www.theweeklyoption.com.